this night is uh, overwhelming. Uh, I, I really appreciate you all being here. One of my wife's pet peeves is that uh, I collect and I save a lot of stuff. I've got, I've got just just uh, cases and cases of stuff stuffed underneath the uh, the staircase. Um, primarily stuff that Annika and Chloe drew <laughs> as uh, as little girls. You know, I've kept every craft that they've made. But I was going through a box of collections the other day, and it was my Glendora PD mementos. And I kind of came upon one of my first GPD evaluations that I received as a rookie police officer. Uh, this particular evaluation was um, prepared by uh, Sergeant Johnny Williams. I was just coming off of probation at the time. And at the end, in this synopsis, there was a, uh, a paragraph. The paragraph said, Officer Staub continues to develop as a young police officer. As stated earlier, Officer Staub is an active patrol officer. He is hardworking and he's intuitive in dealing with people. However, Officer Staub, as noted, also has a quick temper and can lose his temper easily, especially with people who challenge him. If Officer Staub is to be a successful Glendora police officer, he needs to control his temper. What? Well, I'm, I'm certainly glad I was able to correct that little issue. <laughs> Thank you again. Uh, you know, as, as uh, yesterday you saw it on TV, former President Obama had, had said in a farewell speech, you know, I, I'm really milking this goodbye thing uh, good. And so I will keep my remarks uh, short tonight. Um, thank you so much. I wanted to say that being a Glendora police officer has simply been the greatest job one could ever have working for the city of Glendora has been the best place I could have ever chosen to work, and I'm certainly glad I did. When I retired about a month ago, I tell you, folks, it, it wasn't easy. You know, shutting this down, going at a million miles an hour on Friday, <coughs> December 16th, and then suddenly, come Monday, I wasn't, I, I didn't have those those 40 emails a day that I would get, 35 from my boss, Chris Jeffers. <laughs> Hi, Chris, <laughs> could you? <laughs> and if you ask Don, I, I wasn't really a, a very easy person uh, to live with. Um, you know, I, I found myself sitting on the couch, flipping channels. And listen, folks, I'm not bored, but I was flipping channels and I came upon uh, Channel 6, KDOC, and on it was, <laughs> Cops Reloaded, Cops Reloaded, and I stopped, and I watched this program, and I'm like, and, and how pathetic is that? I'm like, Tim, 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 come on, move on in life. But, but you get addicted to police work, and it's just simply hard to just stop one day. Uh, you know, I, I was wondering, did I, did I pull the plug too early? And you know, there, there's no contest, no longevity contest with police chiefs. You know, I, I put in my time and it's time to move on. Um, you know, last week as an example, Don and I went to the movies and we saw Patriot's Day, an outstanding uh, movie about the, the Boston Day, uh, the Boston Marathon um, bombing. And uh, in one particular shootout, uh, the, the, the two terrorist uh, bad guys, one went down, the other one fled from the cops, and I found myself yelling at the at the movie screen, set up a perimeter, set up a perimeter. <laughs> if Marty Barrett was here, he would have set that perimeter up there on tight. <laughs> it's like, how do you shut it down? I was talking to Joe Santoro about sniping police work. It, it's, it's, it's just impossible to do. But then in the mail, I received a, a congratulations, a retirement congratulations card from my mentor, uh, Lieutenant John Doan, 
Lieutenant Doan took me, uh, I, I remember as an officer, he was the, the POA president, I was his treasurer for many years. Um, when I became promoted as a sergeant, he was my lieutenant and he wrapped his arms around an immature uh, <laughs> officer that, that needed a lot of, of work to become a, a leader, to become a supervisor. And John, in his retirement uh, card to me, said, John, uh, well, you remi re reminded me that, that I'm retiring young and healthy, and that he encouraged Don and I to travel and to do what we want to do, and that retirement is good, and just to embrace it. And it was great, great advice, and it came at a needed time, not unlike the, the times. I, I remember specifically, I was the watch commander, I was the watch sergeant, uh, when 9-11 occurred, and my boss, Lieutenant John Doan, at that time, if you guys remember, lieutenants started, they worked four days a week, and they came in at seven, and, you know, and, and John was that guy who walked in the back door, and, you know, just, oh my God, John Doan's here, now he knows what to do and, and help, how to help me, and he's always been that guy. Yeah. Thank you, John Doan. Thank you to the committee who's planned it. We've got to give a great shout out to my administrative assistant, Lisa Taylor. <laughs> to Corporal Nancy Miranda, who is just the best party planner in the world. <laughs> who, uh, who listened to me and um, for my dessert, she said, Chief, what do you want? I said, I want Jim the Donut Man donuts, and so please join uh, join me in having donuts afterwards. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to uh, um, community serve senior community services officer uh, Wendy Brewer, who was the guru of all things uh, the audio visual. She was in charge of it. Thank you, Wendy, very much. And of course, uh, my friend, uh, Sergeant Michael Henderson. <laughs> Michael was, uh, when I was a field training officer, Michael was a brand new officer, and he was one of my uh, trainees at the time, somebody I am so proud of. But what were the words, Michael, could you call it out, that when we, we patrolled around, what was, what was my order? Don't kill Tim. Yeah, that's right. Don't <laughs> kill Tim. Do whatever you want, but don't kill Tim. <laughs> I've been touched so much uh, by the, 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 the nice thoughts, uh, the, the congratulations that I've received tonight in the last year, or pardon me, the last month. Um, and, and now it's my turn to, to say thank you to a few people. Um, back in 1983, I was still searching for uh, an occupation. I had tried to become uh, a journalist. I attended Mount SAC, and as Don had said, uh, we met in, in uh, back in the, the day after we graduated from high school in 1981. I was gonna be a journalist, and then I got a job at a local throwaway newspaper, The Highlander, at the time it was in Hacienda Heights, and I worked there for two months, taking pictures and writing these, these little stories. And I hated it, and I, and I needed to get out from behind that desk, and law enforcement looked like a great, great occupation. Um, I, I grew up in Baldwin Park, and so yeah, Baldwin Park, uh, the Assemblywoman uh, Blanca Rubio is still here, Baldwin Park's in the house. I, I'm glad to have, to have somebody here from, from good old BP. But, um, you know, I, I had seen this, this advertisement uh, in the, the Tribune newspaper for police cadets. Probably the first time I ever traveled to Glendora was the first time a boy from Baldwin Park, you know, would, would go to some place like Glendora. Um, but, you know, when I told the people who I loved that I wanted to be a police officer, um, the, the, the first person I would introduce tonight is my mother, Phyllis Starr. Thank you. It's such a blessing to have you. Um, I didn't get my, my temper from you, certainly. <laughs> my old man died in 2003, and those who knew Don, Donald Stahl knows that you know, perhaps I, I got something from him. But, uh, you know, I, 
you know, it is such a pleasure to be able to become a police officer and to retire and for you to see that you, your baby boy, um, you had to watch and you had to worry uh, about me. And, uh, and for that, uh, you know, I, I love you so much. So thank you. Very much. Mom's companion, longtime companion, Don Grossbeck. Thank you so much. After Dad died, you were that man, and I'm, I'm so thankful that you you came in my mom's uh, life. Uh, my mom grew up as a, an Iowa farmer and, and met Don, and and so six months of the year they um, they spent it out here in the desert, and then six months they spent it on an Iowa farm. So you you provided my mom uh, with a with a dream life, and I appreciate that. Here, here. Tonight, I have my oldest brother here, Stephen Staub, and his yeah. wife, Maria. Steve, wave your arm right there. <laughs> Steve and Maria have been such great supporters of me. Uh, they, their, their hearts fill up their entire chest. They have a, a beautiful family. Uh, we've got Jimmy and his wife, Carrie, and I've got my, my niece, uh, Sarah, and her, her husband, Brian. And I've got Michael here tonight, and uh, thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. I've also got, yes, I've also got uh, my sister, Valerie Victorino, fellow uh, city employee. Valerie, hey! Her daughter, uh, Julie Elder, is here, and her son, uh, my nephew, Robbie Victorino, and his wife, Taya Victorino. Um, Valerie is a longtime uh, employee at uh, the city of Rancho Cucamonga, and so Valerie and I could uh, get up on the telephone and uh, complain about what assholes our city managers are. <laughs> that's just, that's just, a, it's just one-sided, Chris. It's just one-sided. I'm still working. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, she's still employed at that. Yeah. She works in the planning department, and planning in Rancho Cucamonga is anything like a Glendora's planning department that my sister works with some of the hardest working, most dedicated, I would say, underemployed employees uh, at the city. Very nice directors. I've got my sister, Lori Evangelista. She's traveled here today. Lori is uh, four years older than I am. And um, she, you know, she she's the one who made me uh, who I am today. She used to babysit me when I was a kid. Kick one, his butt. Kick his butt. <laughs> one time, one time, Lori was babysitting me. She's four years older than I am, and I turned on her and I punched her, and <laughs> and then it was as if God Himself <laughs> came back and punched me, and I never rose, raised a fist. Oh. My sister, I love him. Really, I love him. Uh, I have two of the biggest fans of mine in the entire earth. I have my in-laws, uh, Joan and Lee Basson. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I met them when I was 19 years old. I drove, I drove to the city of Walnut, to the house on the hill, this Baldwin Park boy, to pick up their daughter to go on a date. But at the time, I drove my father's pickup truck, and we had just come back from a camping trip, and Dad hadn't taken off the camper yet. And so here I came, rolling up to take her daughter out on the first date. And I was driving the Stav Love Mobile. <laughs> And I love Mimi Goddard. I think it's better. I love with Cole Hilting. Family Christy Scales and Don Scales. Christy and the beautiful children, Evan and Ella. Thank you for being here tonight. I appreciate it. I've got friends that I've known for years and years, longer than I've been at the police department. I know of uh, Gloria Bird and her doctor, uh, her doctor, her, her <laughs> husband, Dr. Mark Bird. I've got Bob and Bobby de Benedetto. Thank you so much. I've got Gloria's daughter, uh, Kanani. Where's Kanani at? She's back there. Um, funny, uh, Dr. Bird had, um, for, the, for the last 
15 years or so has been a, a reserve deputy for the Orange County uh, Sheriff's Department. And it's funny, I remember the words specifically that Gloria had said, when I was promoted as lieutenant, you had told Mark that I was gonna be a lieutenant. His response is, those guys don't do anything. And so, <laughs> things that I remember. Um, other friends that are here tonight, Tressa Colquitt, Dawn's partner in crime, and her husband, Brent, thank you for being here. Um, acknowledge uh, my, my, my two writing buddies, uh, Marty Amaro and Scott Naramore. Uh, as they said, I won't continue on you know, those stories, but I can tell you that uh, riding a motorcycle with two, those two guys was the most fun I've had in uh, my police career. Uh, not the most important, being the police chief was the most important thing I did. The most fun I did was riding with uh, Scott and Marty. Scott and Marty, where are you at? Raise your, your hands. Thanks guys very much. <laughs> Scott's been a, a good friend. Uh, he and I talk uh, on at least on a weekly basis, if not two or three times. And uh, you know, we enjoy our off humor and uh, we've been really fortunate to, to find the ability to find work after law enforcement. It's, it's been a true blessing. And as Scott said, uh, our supervisor when we were motors was Al Wadham, and I want to recognize Al. Is uh, where is Al Wadham? Raise your hand, Al Wadham. <laughs> he was a, a brand new sergeant assigned to us three uh, wayward motors, and did a great job. But you know, I, I think uh, he he got some gray hairs about it. I, you know, just working with Tim Staub, I guess, it was, uh, was, was a little tough. I remember uh, there was a, we were assigned to an office in the basement and an earthquake occurred. And Al and I both rose up um, from our desks and immediately went to a doorway and we we're facing each other as this earthquake was going. And afterwards I had teased him. I said, you know, if we had died, Al, my face would have been the last person you would have seen <laughs> yeah. in this world. I bring up Al because um, we had a missing person case. When I worked the Detective Bureau in 2012, we had a missing person case that dated back to 1976. I tried to open that case and I tried to work it, um, but, but there's just too much work to be done and, and I couldn't put in. I, I, I had the theory that when Tim Pfeiffer was a sergeant, um, I, I believe what Tim believed uh, at the time in 1976, there was a serial killer working in the San Diego Valley unbeknownst to a lot of us, and that person was in custody up in Oregon. And uh, both Tim and I, you know, 100% believe that man was responsible with, for Cynthia Hernandez's disappearance, and, uh, and, but I couldn't work that case. I was promoted to captain. Marty went into the detective bureau, and I asked Marty to, to reopen this case, and I asked Al for his help. Al, as a retired police officer, a retired sergeant, he did cold case. He spent thousands of dollars, spent hundreds of hours, if not thousands of hours, drove across country interviewing every single person that was friends or acquaintances with Cynthia Hernandez. Um, eventually, Marty Amaro was able to use DNA to get a break in the case, and after 40 years, the, wow. uh, the person who uh, kidnapped and murdered uh, Cynthia Hernandez, thanks to the great hard work of people like Al Wadham and, and Marty Morrow, the person was convicted, the remains were identified, and just what just last month, Zach, uh, the, the funeral was held at Oakdale Cemetery after 40 years. Extraordinary. Woo! I had teased Steve Martin that uh, a few months ago, we had his retirement party, and uh, it was just a few hours ago that his, his party actually ended because it went so long, but I think that I'm, I'm competing right that. now. So, <laughs> so I, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it short in that there are representatives of the Los Angeles County uh, Fire Department that are in this room today. Uh, Steve Martin, um, Chief Enriquez, uh, Dave Monday, uh, Christine Ward, who uh, I can say that when I became a police chief in December of 2013, a 
um, one month later, Glendora caught on fire. Mm -hmm. 1,900, 1,900 acres burned, five homes burned to the ground, 3,600 people were evacuated. Uh, but for the great work of the Los Angeles County Fire Department, um, this town would have been devastated. And, uh, I, and I'll stand here and tell you that uh, thank you uh, without them, um, it would have been devastating uh, to, to the city of Glendora. Simply said, the Los Angeles County Fire Department is the best fire department in the entire earth. And so, a props to you guys. <laughs> Two friends are here tonight uh, from Inland Valley Humane Society, the executive director, Bill Harford, the, uh, the general manager, uh, Jim Edward. Uh, can I see you guys? Are you, uh, are you still here? Are they in the here. back? Two gentlemen that took care of Glendora that became friends of mine, and I, and I can tell you that that uh, I appreciate them coming tonight and for uh, the, the heart that they showed the, the most important thing to them is the welfare of animals. For an animal lover, I'm just really glad to have uh, become friends of theirs. Yay. I have my track coach here tonight, my longtime track coach, uh, LAPD Chuck Foot. Where is Chuck Foot? Did he uh, take off? Uh, too bad. Chuck Foot uh, was was Don and I, our, our track coach for 20 years, as co-founder of Baker to Vegas, and I was really glad to see my coach here. Uh, I've got members of my running team, uh, Leon and Sue Love from the Glendora Ridge Runners. Uh, Glendora Ridge Runners, stand up, thank you. So nice of you guys to be here tonight. I've got uh, people, unfortunately, uh, the, the Glendale, uh, Rob, one of Rob's captains, uh, Teresa Goldman, couldn't be here tonight. Uh, but uh, we've also got Gordon Arnold. I was one of my responsibilities was in charge of the six city radio system, and both Teresa and Gordon were able to uh, throw me a lifeline when I needed it most, and helped me be successful in that. And for that, I'm, I'm really appreciative of it. I learned what the word interoperability. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't think I'd ever use that in a sentence. Uh, is uh, Lieutenant Tracy Abira here tonight? Tracy from Pasadena PD. She was uh, my, uh, uh, went to SLI, and uh, Tracy must have not been able to attend tonight, somebody I love very much. Uh, Mark Saunders, where's Mark Saunders and his wife Bridget? Mark, where are you? There you are. Mark and I went to uh, LASD Academy Class 226 together. Last name Sanders, stood next to last name Staub. Uh, Mark wasn't very impressed with me at the beginning of the academy, uh, but I can tell you at the end we became, we were friends and became lifelong friends, and I appreciate that. I've got uh, representatives. One of the things that I'm most proud of is the relationship that the Glendora Police Department was able to forge with the school districts that serve uh, the city of Glendora, uh, namely the Glendora Unified School District, the Charter Oak Unified School District, and and Citrus College. I've got, from, from uh, Glendora, I've got Rob Bores and Michelle Hunter. I've got Paul Lopez. I've got Mara uh, Murabito here. Can I get them to, to raise their hands? Tremendous. Tremendous in a lot of ways, but Rob Bores also had a son. And the son came to the Glendora Police Department and became a police officer. And, uh, and up until that moment, uh, I was uh, the fastest runner at the Glendora Police Department until Craig Borsch, his pretty little son, showed up. <laughs> so thanks, Rob, for having fast children. <laughs> uh, from uh, Charter Oak, I've got uh, the superintendent, Mike Hendricks, and I've got uh, Mr. Probst uh, from the, the district as well. Thank you for showing up. Wes Musson, uh, Jim Wong from, from Citrus College, it's, it's so nice to have you here. Um, as you saw before, Chris had brought up his, his um, harem of directors. We've got uh, Vicki Cross and LaShawn Butler and June Overholt and Kathleen Sussman and Janet Stone. And they have been uh, terrific co-workers together as chief 
And so uh, thank you so much for working so closely together. Uh, I love you folks all. Um, and now Chris went out and hired a female police chief, so you know I, I don't know what happened to the testosterone in your in the uh, or directors. I always got to shout out to electives, and and I appreciate you folks so much, the, the, the city council members, because it's a thankless job, and and the stipend you receive is 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 no different than the stipend Don received as a cross country coach. You do the job full time because you love it but it is a difficult, thankless job. And so for the, the five council members, thank you very much. For the former council members that we have here today, uh, Doug Tessiter and, and Joe Santoro, um, and we had one more, uh, Gary didn't make it tonight, but uh, thank you very much for everything that you do to Glendora, for Glendora. Uh, I, I certainly recognize your, your commitment to the city. That being said, one of my responsibilities as chief was to go to the uh, city council meetings twice every Tuesday night. And, um, and, and while I respected you, I hated that job. <laughs> Chris made me go, but uh, you know, I, I would channel them and go, stop talking, oh please stop talking. <laughs> police chiefs who are in, in attendance tonight. Um, you know, you're a police officer for years and years, and you just don't realize what's involved in that job until you become a police chief. And, and it, it seems like you can't ever get a breath. You can't ever get a break, you know, from, from outside influences. You've got, you've got laws that change, you've got AB 109s, you've got Proposition 47s. We, we did, we worked so hard to put criminals in jail and, and a lot of those criminals were let free. There were decriminalization of, 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 of theft uh, laws, of, of drug laws. Um, every year the, the, the governor would threaten to take away what used to be AB 109 money, then they called it TOPS money, then they called it mental health money. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just, it's hard to, to be able to deal with the, the, the public presentation. Um, and so if you are a police chief here tonight or a former police chief, could you stand and please be recognized because I appreciate you so much. traveled a long distance to be here. Uh, people that I used to work with, Brett Michelson, who when he was a sex crimes detective, I was his cadet back in the bureau, and him with his anatomically correct little sex dolls, and, and uh, I, you know, as I became a, a cop, he, we competed in police Olympics together, and world police and fire games, and later when I was promoted as a, as a brand new sergeant, uh, the department detailed me to write his evaluation as a patrol officer, and so very quite challenging. I recognize Jim Campbell. Where is Jim Campbell? Retired senior officer Jim Campbell back there. Jim, I think of you often. Uh, you were one of the first ride-alongs I ever went on. You were that person that, you know, today I can't drive into. When I drive off into a, a street onto a parking lot, I always take off my seatbelt, and, and I've had that habit for 33 years. The girls will tell you, my wife will tell you, I, I bought a new car that won't allow me to take off my seatbelt, I have to disable it. You taught me so many things. You, you travel from Arizona to be here, that too is high praise, because you don't travel outside of, of God's country, you know, to back to California, and so I think of you often, and I, I really, really appreciate you being here tonight. 
But it's, uh, Jim Campbell wasn't my first ride along. Darwin Paulson was my first ride along. For those who knew it, I, I remember uh, Jim Woolen was the lieutenant at the time. I was a brand new cadet. Uh, I, I got off at midnight. Darwin was just coming out of briefing at midnight, and uh, Jim had uh, Woolen had Lieutenant Woolen had assigned me to Darwin Paulson, and so together we got in a police car, and he wasn't happy. You could just see that 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 grumpiness on his face. But it was really cool because we got in a police car and we drove really fast. We drove to Grand Avenue and we went southbound on Grand Avenue. And I'm like, this is, gonna, this is great. I've never been in a police car before. This is fun. And we arrived in and out at Grand Avenue. So Darwin could get in his in and out. And, and so we stood in line and they charged us half price. And I got like a full meal for a dollar twenty or something. And I thought this was the greatest job in the world. <laughs> and then we were eating the burgers inside the restaurant. Remember, it was, it was, it was the, the old style of in and out when a crash occurred at, at Grand and Arrow and everyone was yelling at the officers to go help. And Darwin's like, God oh, damn it, and threw down his burger and together we went. <laughs> and when we got there, Darwin wouldn't go anywhere. It was a pretty good crash. The person was trapped behind the wheel. They were bleeding. And he just yelled at me to go help them. And I didn't know what I was doing. And, but it was a crash. And they were bleeding. And it was the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I think that's where I got my love of traffic collisions. And so, and so that night, in and out for half price in traffic crashes, I, I, had, found, I had found my, my occupation. Oh my it, was, it was tremendous. We've got Gwen McComb here. Gwen is a retired Glendora police officer. She is, she is our, uh, she was a school resource officer extraordinaire, one of the best we've ever had. And uh, she's agreed to be our photographer tonight. Thank you very much, Gwen, for being here. I have to say thank you to my boss, uh, Chris Jeffers, for three years ago, uh, certainly taking a chance on me and appointing me um, police chief. I, I remember three years ago, I remember that conversation. I told you I was about ready to retire and I could only give, you know, two years max. And he said, whatever you can give Tim, it'll be better for it. And, uh, and I accepted that job. I can't tell you folks, he's not a good city manager. And I don't have to say this, you know, Kiss my ass, Chris. No. <laughs> so sorry. I don't so have sorry. to say this, but he is a great city manager. You have no idea how hard he works and how pure his heart is and how you can't do substandard work. And and when you submit something to him, it 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 it, it needs to be correct and it needs to be right. And and the decisions he makes, it's decisions for the city of Glendora. You know, I, I've worked, I've worked uh, since 1983 for 19 different mayors, uh, for five different city managers, and I can tell you by far, Chris is probably my fifth favorite city manager. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Jeffers, it's true. Thank you very much. You know, Chris, a few months ago, and I were talking in his office, and we're talking about the Glendora Police Department, and we're trying to figure out why Glendora Police Department works so well, how we have no relatively low turnover. We may lose two, three officers over a 10 or 15 year period to a neighboring city that would leave, lose 15 or 20. We're not the highest paid, we don't have the best benefits, and we're trying to figure out why Glendora's culture, why our vision, why the way we are works, and why we are one of the best police departments in the San Gabriel Valley by far. My theory is it's not what we're doing right now, but it is maintaining what we've had by um, what others before us had done. If you are a former or retired, either sworn Glendora police officer or non-sworn Glendora police employee, 
please stand up. You are the reason why we are who we are today. Stand up. People like Brian Summers and Jim Warren and Richard Weber and John Jones. Vegas. Hi, Judy. How are you, sweetheart? <laughs> That's the reason why, is because we continue to build on the foundation that was created by the people in this room who stood up, and I appreciate them. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the reason for my success these past three years as police chief, and that's my second in command. My executive officer, um, my captain, uh, Joe Ward. Where is Joe? Yeah. Joe, there he is. What a great man. The most, one of the most loyal people I have ever met in my entire world, in my entire life. Immediately when I was sworn in, I immediately began trying to fill my command staff uh, you know, I, I fought with Vicky a little bit about how fast I was moving, but I couldn't fa um, move fast enough. Um, but fighting with Vicky was just fun, fun in the sport anyway. Um, you know, Joe, it took a while for Joe to apply and fully embrace being a police captain. And when he did, when he jumped into the deep end of the pool, he did a fantastic job. There hasn't been a single moment that I've doubted the wisdom of selecting Joe Ward as a police captain. He is the best possible choice, not for just for me, but also the Glendora Police Department. And he's an extraordinary law enforcement officer. He's been unafraid to give me straight uh, advice, even if we disagree, in fact, especially if we did disagree. I know that he always had my back, and he was the voice of reason, and vision and optimism. Joe did not apply for the position of police chief as his life plans have changed. Christine, his wife, is going to retire from the Los Angeles County Fire Department. And, uh, and Joe is nearing the end of his career. And he would have made a great police chief. Uh, thank you, Joe, very much. Please. Lisa Taylor, my work wife, the person, my, my administrative assistant, my royal, she was my gatekeeper, she was the one who would finish my sentences, she would tell me where to go and how to get there, and without her, I would have been lost. Uh, the, the, the chief she served before, Chief Montoya, and certainly Chief Rob Castro would tell you the same thing. Uh, Lisa, I can't tell you how much I am I, uh, grateful for our friendship, and thank you so much for all you've done. Some flowers for you. Thank you. Lisa, we love you. try to, uh, she was, uh, Lisa was very emotional with my leaving, and so uh, I'm, I'm a small, small person, so I tried to make her cry at least once a day if I, if I could. <laughs> I would uh, ask my uh, my daughters, Chloe and Annie, to come up here, please. Dad. Dad. Chloe, of course, is my little warrior. When she went to the Naval Academy, I wanted her to fly helicopters and kill the enemy for daddy. But, uh, <laughs> she decided to be a political science major and is now a public affairs officer assigned to Washington, D.C., my little warrior. She was really mad at me several months ago when I planned, uh, planned this, this retirement party for this weekend of the inauguration. Uh, until her candidate didn't win, and then she was glad <laughs> she, was, she was there. It's funny, um, cocky little girl, because she had gone to her mother, unbeknownst to her, her mother ratted her out and said, she came up and said, uh, 
Dad, does Dad need some help in writing a speech? Because I'm a public affairs officer and I know how to do it. It's like, no, sweetheart, I think Daddy's got it. Annika, I am just so proud of her. Uh, you know, uh, she is, is just turned out to be such a, a tremendous young woman. She was uh, currently attending Cal Poly uh, San Luis Obispo, and in her freshman year, she said that she wanted to be a finance manager, uh, economics finance manager. And I said, oh, no, my, my city manager is a finance guy. No, you will not be that major. No, and she did, and, uh, and, and between her, yeah, thank you very much, and, it, and it's been just a tremendous thing because between her, her freshman and sophomore year, she was recruited, and last year she, she um, did an internship in Washington, D.C., and she is, uh, she is soon to uh, graduate, and she's already inked a contract with Price Waterhouse. There it is. Okay, in closing, everyone, uh, it's, it's time to uh, drink some more and to listen to Richard Blade. Woo! Take some pictures Woo! of Richard Blade. He is our DJ tonight. What a great guy. I appreciate it. It's going to be hot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Serious, John 33, every day, right? Oh, that's <laughs> Glendora Petey's future is bright. Elisa Rosales will soon be our police chief, and I can tell you that I met Lisa several years ago when I was a lieutenant and when I was a captain, and I was very, very impressed with her uh, abilities, with her presence, with her smarts. She, if it's not going to be an internal person, the, ch the choice of Lisa Rosales would not be better, and, and Lynn Orange should be looking forward to her showing up um, she, uh, she, I, I remember as when she was a commander at Pasadena, she reached out to me, she was affable, she was nice, she's going to make an outstanding uh, Glendora police chief. And why wouldn't she, you know, why wouldn't Glendora 
be trailblazing in selecting Glendora Police Department's first uh, female police chief. Uh, that glass ceiling is broken soon. A female Woo! police officer will have served, absolutely. A female uh, will have served in every rank at the Glendora Police Department. Corporal, Woo! sergeant, lieutenant, captain, and now police chief. And so welcome uh, Chief Rosales when she uh, comes, when she is here. Uh, the future looks very bright. Law enforcement is being challenged now more than ever, vigorously, every day, challenged by the public, challenged by politicians, challenged by the residents for whom we serve. But because of the extraordinary commitment of the members of the Glendora Police Department and their never-ending hard work, our men and women who serve at the Glendora Police Department, both sworn and non-sworn, and the support that we enjoy from the community, I have the full confidence that the Glendora Police Department will continue to serve and GPD will continue to keep Glendorans safe. It has been an honor of my lifetime to be a Glendora police, um, police officer and it's been an honor of a lifetime to serve as your police chief. Thank you again, everyone, for attending tonight. Thank you for your unyielding support of me over the years. May God bless the Glendora or the city of Glendora. May God continue to bless the men and women of the Glendora Police Department. Thank you very much.